What's up guys and welcome back to another episode. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be kind of a longer video as you probably noticed. But I told you guys that me and Weston were going to sit down together and film a podcast, a, a little um, video kind of talking about the Colorado trip and the elk hunt. It was both of our first time going on a backcountry hunt and we really, really enjoyed it. Um, even though it didn't go quite as planned. Um, obviously, he's feeling better. Um, feeling better enough or good enough to go on another backcountry hunt a month later. Um, we don't give up, and we're actually going to go back to that unit, or we have plans to go back to that unit next uh, spring, I mean, sorry, next fall, um, probably around the same time. Um, we're not going to tuck our tails, and we don't want it to kick our butt and just say, ah, uh, it's too tough. I mean, we're 20, I'm, I'm 20 years old, he's 18. There's really nothing that's too tough, um, like terrain-wise. We can go and we can hunt anywhere. We can be successful. We have the knowledge. We have the experience now. Um, but I don't feel like we touched on it well enough. And the whole reason why we went 12 plus miles into the backwoods is because we had a, a friend of John's go through on mules and scout that area in that unit which was unit 82 in Colorado he went through there the week before we showed up to hunt it and he saw a bunch of good um, elk tons of elk down there so on our way in um, you guys know we hiked in halfway the first day it was like six miles or something like that our packs were 80 pounds on average 85 I know Royce's pack was about 90 pounds but we hiked that in. Everything was like 17 to 25 percent grade straight uphill. It was the roughest and toughest hunt that I've ever been on. Now we made camp six miles in and we camped right next to a stream. We filtered water and the days before leaving for the trip and every day that we were there um, I drank and Royce uh, drank um, it was like a gallon, gallon and a half of water. We acclimated really well and we didn't have very much, or I didn't have very much breathing trouble. Um, I stayed hydrated, and I think that it was just a, a lack of drinking water. Uh, I'm not here to, I'm not here to bash him at all. Um, we're we're just here to talk about this trip and basically give you guys more details on what had happened and why that things didn't go the the, the way that they wanted or the way that we wanted them to. Um, he was fine. Um, we made camp Sunday evening because we had we had drove through the night Friday night, got there Saturday morning, hiked um, halfway on Saturday, stayed the night Sunday morning. We finished it off Sunday afternoon. We're sitting in camp, and the whole time we're looking at our our Onyx maps on our phones. We had service, and we were able to pull up the GPS on our phones. We had paper maps, and everything down in that valley, or everything that our our equipment said was yes there is water down in that valley so we take off down into that valley and, and at that point we had no water right we had two bottles left and i drank mine on the way down in and then you drank like three quarters of that other bottle on the way um in and on the way back out um, i was i was good to make it through the night but i i was kind of struggling we knew that we could go back for water but it was just going to be like five or six miles to get out and go get it and that would have been rough and obviously um, we could have done it we could have stayed for the 10 days that we were supposed to be there but uh, and and honestly um we we didn't have to call care flight i mean we could have just really went out on a limb and and risked it i guess but again none of that's worth it so basically what i'm really kind of wanting to address is we spent all this money and we took the time off from from our jobs, our real jobs. Um, he took time off from school. We put in the effort to film videos for you guys, to go different places to reach a broader audience, and to teach you guys stuff and show you guys hunts that y'all maybe wouldn't get to go do. Um, and that, that's part of the reason why we do what we do. It's um, just so we can we can be helpful, we can give tips, and, and we can share our experiences, of course, but we want to teach you guys everything that we know and help you guys as much as we possibly can. That way we're all more successful hunters and better. But um, it was just one of those deals where we made the right call. And we're, I, I want to address some of the really rude and uncalled for comments that were in some of these videos um one of which 
you guys should uh, you guys should stay in Texas and play video games. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, we laughed at you. Like, we flat out laughed at you because if you were in the same situation as us, and wh- whether it be his situation or, or you were in my position, we made the right call. And not only that, but like. Everything that we had, GPS, paper maps, everything that we had to help us navigate and survive in the woods failed us. So yeah. you, you can't do anything about that except for hike the five or six miles back to where we camped the first night and to that stream. And there was no water down in there. So with that, you can't hunt that area. We passed up public land hunters that uh, we I mean, we we passed them up and then we went over the the ridge we went over the mountain and went down into a different saddle and we stopped and talked to these two guys and they were like wow y'all got you guys are gonna go hunt over there and we were like yeah there's that's where the elk are and they're like well you're we all are pretty freaking committed and, and pretty crazy and we were like you know it's it's nothing that our bodies can't handle we didn't know any better we'd never been on anything like that well i mean yeah, yeah I mean, but everything that we had navigation wise everything that told us that you know there was water there it, it wasn't true it was a dry year um the maps apparently hadn't been updated but we've been doing research and and studying for this hunt and getting ready physically working out all this stuff drinking water um beforehand going into this hunt to be as prepared as we possibly could be and the reason why we had to come out was not our fault i mean he drank water uh, throughout the day I drank a lot of water throughout the day, the days prior, the day before, everything. Um, it just ha- so happened that you know we had enough water to you know, get us to more water. Let me put it that way. Like we had, we had this much water in a bottle, and or, or actually we had two full bottles, and we drank them down, and that was enough to get us to water, and we were fine. That would have been perfectly fine, had whenever we got down to that valley had there been water and there wasn't so that's no fault of our own um and go when we went down in that valley to look for water it was like this it was straight downhill and straight uphill coming back we gained i don't even know how many foot yeah it was like 800 800 somewhere around in there but we we literally we started out at about 5500 feet of elevation 6000 foot somewhere in there from the trailhead and the highest point I think we were at was like 12,750, 12,500 feet of elevation. That's a lot. That's six thousand. That's over 6,000 feet in elevation change. And, of course, we camped overnight, so we acclimated. At, and halfway in between that distance, drank lots of water. We were fine. But we had enough water to get us two more water. And whenever we got down in there and there wasn't any, there's was nothing we can do about that. And he made it through the night obviously um we could have not called care flight we could have easily just um i could have woken up the next morning and hiked and got water and then come back but i wasn't about to let him leave and and go by himself in in the dark and unfamiliar right so uh, land and and at the during the night at that point i couldn't go 10 seconds without some part of my part of my body just cramping up really bad, and I'm not, you know, saying that to sound like a a baby or anything, but it's true. That's true. Like yes, yeah. I mean, there's nothing I could do. So regardless of the way that hunt turned out, we <clears throat> still went to to hunt elk, of course, share our experiences, um, but give tips and tricks and stuff along the way because we have done a lot of studying. We have gathered a lot of information, and there's a lot of the things that we know and um, are good at here in Texas, or we're not in Texas right now, but back in Texas, um, yeah, with the, nice. with the spotting and the stalking of, of our whitetail and our hogs, um, that a lot of that relates over to what we do in, in the mountains. I mean, here in Nebraska, we're in Nebraska right now hunting mule deer. It's 24 freaking degrees, and there's snow on the ground, and we're out here being miserable and having no, fun. We're having fun. We are having right fun. The weather's pretty rough. Deer. Yeah, we're, yeah. The weather's rough, but we're, we're seeing. Fun. Yeah, we're having fun. We're seeing lots of deer. All in all, I just wanted to sit down and kind of talk about this between him and I, because we were hunting together, and the the care flight nurse she made us fly out together. She said, since y'all are hunting together, um, your other two buddies they can stay. We can't 
hold them like they're gonna have to stay here and John was in really rough shape too and they didn't find water either uh, Royce has hiked all over the world he's been to lots of different places and maps filled them too there's nothing we can do about that it's all done with now it's it's over with um, I'm not mad we actually laugh about the situation now and we give him a hard time about drinking water now but <laughs> it, we had a ton of fun on that trip and we just want to keep going and doing stuff like this and sharing the experiences with you guys because um, you know in the end we want to uh, be doing this full time and um, we love what we do we love picking up this camera and talking to it and neither one of us are trying to be rude here or be mean or any sort of thing like that but um, though for those of you that left rude comments like we're not stupid. We understand that water and shelter are the two main things that you have to have in a situation like that in 12 miles into the backcountry. Like, we know. You don't have to sit here and tell us. We know. It's easy to say stuff like that sitting behind the computer screen. Exactly. Um, it's really easy. But whenever you're out there doing it, and because I guarantee you that 95% of those people that, that left really rude comments, you couldn't do what we did. And that's not tooting our own horns. That's not us being rude. That's straight facts. Because whenever we took off and started it initially, we thought, you know, or actually it was before we even took off up the mountain, we were like, this is going to be pretty easy. We're going to yeah. be able to make this in the first day. We were yeah. quickly humbled by the mountain. Well, whenever, whenever you think a 70-pound pack, I mean, and you put it on and you're just standing there, you're like, oh, okay, this isn't going to be too bad. And just hearing 70 pounds, you're like, oh, that's not not that bad. But then when you start walking with it, going straight uphill, and for me and him, it's pretty much half our body weight, <laughs> it gets rough. Yeah. Fast. And, and not only that, with gaining altitude, it gets harder and harder to breathe, and it's just, it's not a good deal. All those, a lot of those dudes that you see that are hunting out west and stuff like that, they got like 30 pound packs. Right. You know, we were literally taking everything we needed for the next 10 days. 10 days, yeah. Uh, food, clothes, uh, All tents, the camping stuff. Camping, everything. I mean, both of our packs that we had were, how many cubic inches were they? Mine's a 6,500 yeah, or 6,000. Yeah, so mine, and all the zippers on mine completely broke because I had it packed full with so much stuff and yeah. stuff strapped on the outside and everything else. It was pretty ridiculous. We had equipment like this stuff right here. I'll show you guys this. It's This thing weighs probably 10 pounds. I know it doesn't look very big, but it's a portable generator. charges all of our batteries and stuff yeah, um, but... to keep our camera equipment charged and and all that i mean that's what added a lot of weight to right this. camera yeah. camera gear camera all the batteries yeah um but all in all it was an it was an awesome experience it was an awesome um hunt for that first afternoon that we did get to hunt um we didn't catch it on film but um we did bugle and get a response and so we were very excited about the next the following six or seven days and hunting that area and it just didn't end up going the way that we wanted it to but most of all, we're, we're here to share our experiences, um, be as helpful as we possibly can, because there's just not a lot of channels out there that do what we do, that vlog, hunt Texas in different states, and we're constantly putting out footage, we're constantly giving tips and tricks, we're constantly trying to help you guys out to be more successful, and it was funny, the way this whole uh, thing is planned out, the way that we're talking about this in this video. Um, I mentioned it in video one of this series, which I'm sure you guys saw it because this video obviously has gone up after the series, but um, I got a phone call. His name was Brayton, right? It was either, yeah, it was Brayton, Brayton or Brayton. Brayton. I, I had a hard time hearing his name over the phone, yeah. but he called me, and I've never talked to or met this, uh, this young man in my entire life, and he's like, hey, man, we appreciate it so much. Like, we appreciate everything that you put out on YouTube to help us. Um, get into bow hunting and to help us out and that that's the stuff right there that keeps us doing what we do like that's that's super awesome and then I got a message on Instagram just probably 20 or 30 minutes ago uh, another kid sent me a picture on Instagram of a hog that he had shot with his bow it was his first bow kill and he's like man I missed three does I shot at does three different times and missed and then I finally got the, a shot opportunity and on at this hog hit him perfect and he ran like 20 something yards and that's awesome man and he's like you inspired me to get out and go do um, bow hunting and and get out there as much as i possibly can so that's that's awesome that's uplifting to both of us because we get stuff like that all the time and we appreciate the support from you guys so very much and we're hoping that this kind of 
clarify, make like makes things a little bit more clear on the whole Colorado situation and how things went down. Um, none of it being our fault. We could have gone back five or six miles and gotten water, but with the condition that he was in and the distance back to that water, we made the safe call. We made the best call and it is what it is you know that's we're going back next year regardless i mean if it's going to be that same unit or not that's kind of what we're hoping to do but if not that's fine too we'll go back somewhere else we will hunt elk again and we will be successful we're not scared and um, we are really really appreciate the support from you guys and the kind words that 95 percent of you left and the other five percent um is mostly y'all voicing your opinion but there were some unnecessary and uncalled for things that um, again because you don't know the situation you don't know what's going on um, you're kind of making false assumptions and that's just rude and uncalled for so we wanted to talk about this trip together as a whole and and sh you know shed some light on it and so i think we kind of did a good job of that but be expecting uh, so much coming from us this fall we're excited about everything to come we've got all kinds of stuff planned every single weekend from here until december so um, we're happy to be filming cameras in our hands and putting out awesome content for you guys and we do all kinds of hunting obviously um, we love to be in texas and sitting over feeders shooting hogs and deer but at the same time we love to go stalk them we love to come up north yep. and we love to hunt the different species so yeah that, um, we're trying to to expand out there's always a lot of comments left on, oh i'd like to see you go on public land and do this not hunt over a feeder that's what we're yeah, out here doing that's what we're right doing now and, so and we're having i mean we haven't had success i mean we're having success we just yeah we we've had opportunities at, at deer um yeah. just not the right deer we just so. haven't i mean we've had plenty of opportunities at does we just haven't gone after them because we want to you know we're day two you yeah. know we're, we're kind of waiting to see what the the deer are going to be doing what kind of bucks we can find in the next couple of days and then we're going to start making our decisions pretty quick so we're, we're excited about this whole series and again it's already uploaded by the time this video goes up so i hope that you guys really enjoyed it um one of the big one of the big challenges that i have going right now is if we hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year which we're sitting at over 16,000 now if we hit 50,000 I will buy a Matthews Triax or Halon 32, and I will give that sucker away to one of you guys. So, um, be sure to what video was that? I gotta go back and see what video that was. So, in order to be entered in for the bow, go back to the video of me shooting my buck, and I'll leave it linked in the description below. Click on that video, drop a comment, leave a thumbs up, and share it, and you will be entered in to win. So. It's kind of a big goal. It's kind of a big um, step to take there, and we've got three months, so I think we can do it. I really do. And of course, at 20 or 25 or 30,000, I haven't really decided when we're going to do it yet. But I want to give a hunt away with myself and go somewhere and take you guys or have you down in Texas somewhere and figure something out. It'll be it'll be really cool, and um, we get to pay it forward and, and you know give back to you guys for being such loyal subscribers and fans and we love each and every one of you and we appreciate the hard knocks and some of you guys that think you're real tough in the comments like you're good entertainment and we know i mean we really do we know we're not we're not stupid we've been hunting for pretty much all of our lives i know i started at about five or six years old same. and same thing with him so we've got a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge that we want to share with you guys but it'll play out in this series it'll play out with everything else that we're doing for the rest of the season and we're excited to share it all and so with all that being said thank you guys so very very much for watching here's to 50,000 what else, what else, what else, what else? you got any last words any final words nope i am i'm good hashtag drink more water love you guys later nah. <laughs>